four determining factor, uh, factors for the capabilities we can maintain in Europe. And the first and foremost factor, of course, as we mentioned now many times this morning already, is money. But I would say rather the lack of money. Um, first, if you look what has happened the last few years, tremendous defense cuts in Europe, starting around 2010. In the range of 5 to 8 percent, in the bigger countries like United Kingdom, France, Germany, 10 to 20 percent in medium-sized, smaller countries, including the Netherlands. Sometimes more than 20 percent, even up to 40 percent in very small countries like the Baltic States. I believe Latvia reduced, for example, 40 percent uh, over the last few years. Now, recently, thanks to Mr. Putin, but I would say even more thanks to the first signs of an economic recovery, we are seeing calls for increasing the budget. Um, but I think we should be very realistic on this. Uh, the Polish promise to move to 2% of its GDP is fine, uh, and we should applaud it. But what will be the effect? 200 million euros will be added to the Polish defense budget, which will reach a level of 7 billion euros annually. That is the defense budget of a country with 40 million inhabitants is comparable to the defense budget of the Netherlands. So nominally, this does not mean an enormous volume of money. The three Baltic states will probably also improve their defense spending, but the three together do not spend more than 800 million euros a year. 800 million euros a year. So this is, even in Eastern Europe, relatively small money, although it should be applauded, of course. And if you go further south in Eastern Europe, if you look to the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, they will not uh, really increase their budgets only, only marginally. If we move to Western, Northern and Southern Europe, uh, that is an upward sort of trend, at least an idea about moving upward in some of the countries. The most clear case is non-NATO member Sweden, which has promised to increase the budget by 10%. Um, but, and I checked it with Thomas Rees earlier this morning, or yesterday evening, better, this actually will only sort of follow the inflation rate. The 10% increase will be reached by 2024, which is 10 years from now. And if you add an inflation rate of 1 to 2% annually, of course, that takes, uh, uh, takes care of the inflation rate. In this country, there's also been a debate over the last few months to go out of the sort of the deepest point in terms of defense spending. But the figures I hear here in the political circus in the Hague are about you know, a maximum of 50 million annually to be added to the budget. Well, the current government and the previous government have cut the budget by one and a half billion euros. So this is figures, this is small money. And in the three big European countries who are spending most of the defense money in Europe, the United Kingdom, France, and Germany, the defense budget actually will stay level in the next few years, or even still slightly go down till they reach in 2016 setting a point where the plan proceeds again for more spending. So across Europe, uh, we will not spend a lot more. Uh, than we did in the recent years. At best, we will spend a little bit more than right now, but we will still spend a lot less than was planned for five to six years ago in the defense plans and in the long-term planning. So the trend, in other words, with small adjustments will continue, and European countries will have less capabilities or can even lose more capabilities than they have already lost. I refer to the maritime patrol aircraft, the UK no longer is flying, I refer to the tanks, the Dutch army is no longer using. The second factor that is driving, uh, I think, the capability issue is the division in Europe over security priorities. And unfortunately, the Ukraine, I think, has rather reinforced that issue. And that is, of course, the classical debate, which you have seen during the NATO summit in 2010, about, you know, should the focus be on Article 5, collective defense, or should it be along Article 5, the deployed operations, crisis management operations, whatever label we put on them, far away outside the NATO treaty area to deal with crisis over there. If you travel on the European continent, very easy. The further east you go, the more you come in Article 5 landscape, the further you come to the Atlantic shores, the more you are in non-Article 5 uh, landscape, or for that matter, waters. Um, today, if you would go to Italy and you would ask both politicians, and I think also the average Italian men, women in the street, what is your main security concern? They would say it's not Badusa. Is the 50,000 illegal immigrants Jamie referred to an absolute new figure already reached now in a couple of months in 2014 coming through Libya or through Egypt across the Mediterranean into Italy and they will reach 
another phenomenal record number later this year, uh, if you come to the end of the year. That is a major concern, security concern in Italy today, and I think if you go to Spain or Greece, uh, where maybe the scale of the problem is different, the answer to the question would not be very much different. For other countries, it's sort of the piracy thing around the whole of Africa. In this country, where security has become very much sort of an economic issue, we have to defend our trade interests and economic interests. You know, there is concern about the piracy. Well, the good news is that the, both the NATO and EU operations and the national US operation around the whole of Africa has very good results, and the piracy has gone down tremendously. Uh, but of course, if you go to the other side of Africa, to Western Africa, it's increasing tremendously uh, as we speak. So this will be another issue, security concern issue on the minds of some of the member states, their politicians in, in, in Western Europe. Um, deepening multinational defense cooperation in the cluster format in particular has become a must in Europe, so we can hear across the European continent, and nations are already focusing on this, on this. they're uh, focusing their actions on that. Framework nation concept has been mentioned, and there are others as well. So why do we not look at reality and adjust the theory instead of maintaining theoretical security and defense concepts and postures which we cannot afford anymore, which we will not be able to sustain uh, in the future? Thank you. I enjoyed pretty much, and of course it's very relevant considering the current crisis in Eastern Europe, Ukraine, and the relations with Russia, and upcoming NATO summit in September. So I think this event was extremely relevant and, yes, incredibly different, interesting. And was there anything in particular that struck you most? Well, I always like to hear different opinions. And today I think we heard like really different points of view, supporting more involvement in Ukraine and vice versa, considering more cost-benefit analysis and thinking about cooperation with Russia in other regions except Eastern Europe. So I always appreciate listening to different opinions. That was that I liked the most probably.